uh, as my special guest today, I have the one and only Jacob Gibbs. What's up, Jacob? Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me on, Dave. Good, and thank you for wearing that Denver Broncos hat. Go Broncos. Hey, you got it, man. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think most everybody at Mortgage Coach knows who Jacob is. Uh, if you've ever listened to training interviews, there's a good chance that you're hearing Jacob's uh, voice. Although we have a, a very deep roster of awesome trainers now. So you hear more and more uh, mortgage coach trainers, success coaches doing the training content. But Jacob runs um, technology support, um, just wears a lot of hats. Well, he always wears a Denver Bronco hat, but he wears a lot of roles at Mortgage Coach. Uh, Jacob, how long have we been working on the Advice Engine now? Uh, Advice Engine has been going for a little over a year. We've been working on just the background element. So it's been a long running project. Yeah, this has been a very big project. It's a very big milestone for Mortgage Coach. And I think most of you guys know this, but we have a mission to not only help loan officers be the best, not just their best, we want you to be the best mortgage professional in the industry. And we wanna transform how Americans get into mortgage debt. That is our mission, that every time someone gets a mortgage, they pick a smarter mortgage that helps them achieve their financial goals in a way that helps them build wealth faster. So we needed to create a new engine to do that. We have created a product called the Advice Engine. And this is what creates your total cost analysis. So, so Joe Fatur, our product visionary and president of Mortgage Coach, we, we had this vision that we had to make it faster and easier to create this total cost analysis, uh, assuming you're not using one of our many integrations where it's automatically created. So lots of integrations could just auto create a total cost analysis. But if you're doing it as a loan officer for a family, you're now doing that in the advice engine. And then we also want to make it easier to learn. So like if you're new to Mortgage Coach and you haven't created one or you haven't created 10, we want to make that just brainless, easy. So we've added a lot of new features to make it easier to learn and easier to use. If you are a Mortgage Coach and you have used the new advice engine, we are collecting testimonials and reviews on this product. So please share them in our Facebook group. You can either put them in comments on one of our announcements for the advice engine, or just you know do it with um, Katie Pastors that twice now, where she's created a post um, sharing what she likes best about the, um, the new advice engine. So, so Jacob, anything you want to say before we we dig in and we unleash it for everyone? Oh, I would just say that, uh, you know, it's it's always an evolving experience, so we still welcome your feedback. You know, we'd love to hear what you think about it, positive or negative. You know, you'll see that there's links all throughout the presentations that allow you to contact us for feedback. Um, and then a big shout out to the beta crew. I mean, there was over 150 people that hit on this for a closed beta period, and then it opened up for everybody, and you guys all saw the link at the bottom. Uh, but big thanks to those 150 people who, who gave us some extra time there, gave us some detailed testing, and, and made sure that this, this came out right. So appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Yeah, and we've, we've had an open beta now where we've had over 500 loan officers uh, testing this, using this, feeding on this for you know, between the closed beta and the open beta, it's been over over 90 days. I want to say almost five months. So so this is time tested in the market. But remember, guys, we get better from you. So if you have ideas and suggestions that will help you deliver advice versus price, we, we still want to hear that. So, Jacob, why don't you share your screen? For some people, it's going to be the first time they're seeing it. This is now the default mortgage coach experience. Um, give us a tour of it and let's do an overview for like 10, 15 minutes. And then let's, let's build out some strategies and teach people you know, what other top producers are doing in the market right now. All right, great. So um, if you were to still go to edge.mortgagecoach.com like, or if you used one of your bookmarks, uh, you know, one of your favorites, it's gonna redirect you to the new advice engine now. Um, Keep in mind that just like before, there's still ways to jump between the old and the new. You can still hit view legacy if you wanted to go back to the previous version for this session. Uh, but next time you come here, it's gonna open an advice engine again. This is the default landing space as, as Dave was saying. So um, 
some really powerful new features that are in here. For those of you who are fairly new to the system, you're going to find that there's video content that's sprinkled in here uh, based on your usage. So uh, things like how to read and send a TCA, real-time highlighting uh, with, with Mortgage Coach Live. These are some key components that we feel that new users uh, tend to struggle with. So we made sure to, to put these up in the front here. Uh, you've also got some video content that streams in on the right, and this is going to continue evolving, by the way. So right now, it's things like how to use the search all feature. This is a new uh, a new feature that we've expanded on a little bit more than we did in the old version. Uh, in that, uh, when you when you do your searches now, you know you can still do an empty search, but you also have a way to just filter your existing list. So instead of having to do search all and then go and find somebody, uh, you can just start typing a name, and it'll immediately filter your list here. Hey, Jacob, um, real, yes. real quick, before we jump off the video content, uh, it is so important to us to help you become a mortgage coach where you're teaching borrowers and realtors new financial strategies. But it's, it's super important that we're teaching you not only how to use mortgage coach, but how to go from price to advice. And so the videos are, you know, they're there, but they're contextual. So if you created less than 20 total cost analysis, you're gonna get beginner's trainings. If you've done more than a certain number, we're gonna give you different videos. Also, shout out to all the companies that partner with us and build us into your tech stack and build us into your culture. You can put specific videos that are unique to your brand, unique to your culture. So, you know, it's an advice engine to help you deliver a total cost analysis faster, but it's also a training platform to take regular loan officers that are giving fee worksheets into advisors. So I want you guys to realize, one, they're contactual, and two, for all you administrators and C-suite executives, understand that we can, we can drive specific videos that are unique to your, your company and your platform. Keep it going, Jacob. All right, thanks, Dave. Uh, so client goals, this is pretty much uh, just what you would expect. So this is the same thing as we had in the legacy version. So you can still maintain your goals. You can still edit them as you did before. Um, and then you'll notice that there's three different areas up here in our home screen. Uh, we've got our recent client list, which is what you've expected, what you come used to seeing. And that's uh, just, you know, your last 20 most recent clients are going to show up in this list. Uh, you can open any of these for editing by doing a single click on them. And we'll do that in just a minute here. Uh, but I want to give a little bit more overview on what's on this home screen. Now you also have the recent views tab. So just like before, you can see how often, how many times your, your different analyses are being viewed. And then you've got a new area called strategy templates. Now, for those of you who are longtime users that have never used the advice engine, you may not have this tab yet. And the reason is you haven't created any strategy templates. So they'll, they'll show up once you create one. I'll show you how to do that in just a few minutes here, just to make sure everybody understands uh, what, what the power is of these. And um, if you don't see it yet, follow along you know, in a couple of minutes here when we start creating strategy templates, I think you're gonna find this is one of the most powerful features that, uh, that we've been able to push in here for you. So a couple, couple of thoughts on that for you new users or for you branch managers that wanna bring on new loan officers into using it, you'll notice that as Jacob drags his mouse over a feature, um, tool tips come up. I, I do recommend even for you seasoned users, keep that on for you know, 10, 20 TCAs. But notice towards the bottom, you can turn it off. So if you've gotten to power user status and you no longer need it, you can turn off those tool tips. But that was an important feature to make Mortgage Coach easier to learn for everyone. And then, and then Jacob, let's just get right to how fast can you create a total cost analysis using strategy templates? All the time I have you know, heads of production branch manager go, I would love it if my loan officers would use mortgage coach, but sometimes they tell me it takes too long. Show them, show them how fast they create a TCA um, using strategy templates. Okay. So to start off with, a strategy template is a collection of scenarios. So before you could save a product template, you could save a fee template, but you couldn't save a collection of scenarios as a single template. Now you can. Uh, so inside strategy templates, when, when you do this, all you have to do, and I'm going to kind of rip through this a little fast here, but uh, I'm going to do a cost of waiting. So I'm simply going to left click on it and I'm going to copy it to a new client. And then I'm going to call this one Joe Client. I'm going to come in and modify my purchase price. Let's say this is a $375,000 comparison that I'm doing. 
and it's going to go up to 400 if they wait too long. And then I can actually go to the end here and generate my link, add a video, and this is done. So as soon as I pop my video on there, I can now share this link with my clients. Uh, I'm not going to put a video for right now, but you can see that I've got uh, a 375 purchase price for buying now. Um, I've got a wait too long that goes up and really simple scenario. It's going to cost you $130 if you wait and the price goes up. There's different variations that you can do here as well. So say for instance, this was my short version of a cost of waiting, but I have another strategy template that's called just regular cost of waiting. This is the four option version. So if I want to do that, copy to a new client, this one's going to be Dave Savage. And then all I'm going to do is modify my pricing. So let's say uh, 350 and then they wait for a drop. It actually went down to 340. No drop, stayed at 350, but the rate went up. And then worst case, it actually went up in price, 360. And the rate went up too. Um, and because I spawned this off an existing set here, this is actually ready to roll. So if I hit my preview here, I about 45 seconds, I've created a full cost of waiting analysis that shows four different potential options. If you buy now, you're gonna have the best possibility of getting the purchase price you want and the rate you want. If you wait for a drop, you might get your price drop, but the rates can go up. If you wait and the price doesn't drop and the rates go up, and then worst case, we get a bidding war and the rates go up. You waited too long. And uh, one, of the, one of the cool things about the cost of waiting program is that you can actually change these benchmarks to tell a different story. So instead of you know, showing somebody how much you can save them, you can show them how much it's gonna cost them if they don't take action. So once I've done that in my analysis screen and I jump over to my uh, output presentation, you can see that this, we have this cool cascade effect of how much it's gonna cost you to wait on all these different scenarios that we're looking at and how much more interest it's gonna cost you over time. So, so guys, I want you to realize there's not a scenario you cannot create in less than a minute no more than two minutes. So every mortgage coach member, you need to create strategy templates, you know, have a purchase options template, have a cost of waiting template, have an MI analysis, have a rent versus own. I'm going to start a thread in our Facebook group um, asking, you know, what strategy templates are you creating today? But homework assignment for everyone, start creating strategy templates. It will make it easier and faster for you to create TCAs, total cost analysis, for your most common scenarios. And a reminder to folks, let's say you filled out your strategy templates. You've got a dozen of them. And, and now you have some unique situation. You can always go to a most recent client. You can search up a client faster than ever. And you can create and use the copy feature to, to duplicate a client. So we, we just really worked hard to remove clicks. We, we don't want you clicking your button any more than you have to. In fact, my favorite new feature in the advice engine is the fact that you don't need to put in the username and password anymore. You just go to the link and boom, we've removed, we've removed typing and keystrokes from the equation. So, so if you have questions, share them in comments down below. So if you're watching this in Facebook Live right now, I will start monitoring that. Any questions that you have for Jacob, That'll be my job to bring them in. If, if you've been one of our testers or if you were in the open beta and there's something you like about it, let us know, know what that is. Uh, if you do want to submit ideas and suggestions, um, if it's a support question, support at mortgagecoach.com. And Jacob, how do you want folks to submit any ideas or suggestions? You know, uh, we're actually out of beta right now, but you can still click this link at the bottom here uh, that says email beta at mortgagecoach.com and that'll spawn an email to us and you can write it up. Uh, our, beta, our beta team will receive that and we'll make sure to get back to you in a timely fashion. Uh, please don't use beta at Mortgage Coach for support questions. Um, send those to support. They're going to be able to get to you a little bit faster to make sure you get a faster resolution. Beautiful. All right, Jacob, we'll keep walking us through what you think is most important and some of the things that you're hearing uh, the most feedback on. All right. So um, we, we talked about what you can do with a strategy template. Now, how do I actually build one of these things? Well, we've made it actually easier than ever. So let's say I've done an annual mortgage review for somebody in the past. And when I go into this client, you know, I've got just their current mortgage versus a reinvestment of an extra hundred bucks and then a refi. Um, 
if I want to turn this into a strategy template, all I have to do is on the first screen of the client, toggle this from no to yes. You'll see it adds the double asterisk here. For those of you who are used to doing this, you actually had to manually add these before. Now you can just toggle with a switch here, hit next. And then if I go back to my home screen now and look under my strategy templates, I now see my annual mortgage review strategy template. Now, if you want to edit these, instead of copying a new client, you can simply hit edit template. This actually opens the template for editing. So if I wanna remove certain factors or maybe I wanna leave like the rates blank, for instance, because I wanna make sure I fill those in on a case by case basis, I might remove those from my template so that the next time I spawn it, I have to, I have to make sure that I, I put in that rate. But pretty straightforward in terms of saving a template. It's really just this toggle switch. If you ever wanted to move something from being a template back over to a regular borrower record, simply hit no here. And then when you hit next, it'll actually go back to your recent clients list. So pretty powerful stuff there on the strategy templates. There's a lot of cool things you can do. Like Dave was saying, you know, some of our more common uh, proposals here, especially from a marketing level, are going to be things like the cost of waiting. They're going to be things like cash out refis where you're, you're kind of putting a, a general scenario out there. But it doesn't always have to be general. You can start with a very general template and then detail it. Uh, but one of the things that I would highly recommend when you build these strategy templates is make sure to include your closing cost templates in there. So for instance, on this refi 30 fixed, the reason I didn't have to mess with this when I spawned it is because I used a template. So your fee templates are located right here. If you haven't built any, if they're empty, uh, it's very simple to build a fee template. Simply add the line items that you see fit for, for this loan scenario. And when you're done completing this, all you're gonna do is save as, and then you're gonna name it. So this is uh, gonna be my new fee template, uh, 30 fixed. You can assign it to a specific state if you only want it to be available for that state. If you leave it open, it'll be available for all. So just hit OK there. And now I've got a new template to select from in my list. So really just one time data entry to get your general line items in there, save it as a template. And you'll find that um, different people do different ways with a template. Some people will just save their, uh, their origination fees and some of the in-house processing fees and then they'll add title fees on later. Some people will use percentages for title fees. It just depends on how you wanna do it. But remember, this can be used at any point in the loan, in the loan process. So this might be pre-loan pre estimate, this might be post-close. Uh, so kind of, you wanna remember that they're still gonna get regular mortgage docs that are gonna have down to the cent type of calculations on them for their closing costs. So don't feel like you have to match it cent for cent. Uh, usually these templates, you can get them really close to what the expectation would be on the loan estimate and still provide a very valuable presentation for your client. All right, so let's uh, let's go back on the home screen real quick. Uh, I think we've covered just about everything up here, um, but I did want to show you these these videos that are available. So there's the what is a rent versus own. If you just want to know what a rent versus own covers, um, we discussed the search all a little bit. Uh, there's also a, uh, what is the TCA? So this just gives you a general overview of what kind of presentation are you actually expecting to deliver to your client? And then when you wanna dive into the details on it, check these out, how to read and send the TCA. This is pretty important. If you don't quite understand all the fields that are being shown, this one's really gonna give you a good overview of, of what that presentation entails and how to explain it to your borrower. Now, next thing here, let's, uh, let's jump into a client real quick and let's take a look at some of the, uh, the new features inside the editor. So we talked about the strategy template switch here, uh, but most notably, check out on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, you actually have a toolbox now and you have control over this toolbox, by the way, so you can choose which widgets you wanna show in there. And in this case, I'm, I'm showing my notes widget. And this is just like the yellow sticky pad that was in the old version. So uh, here, enter notes here. So that, that note section will actually follow you through the proposal, just like it did on the last version. So keep that in mind. Um, below that, you have things like the Tuesday interviews. Now, this is a playlist of all these Tuesday calls. So if you, uh, if you hit this little uh, hamburger menu here, it'll actually bring out the playlist for you, and you can choose any of the videos in here. And this is a long playlist because Dave has done a lot of great calls. Um, so you have full autonomy to, to rummage through here and, and find a good piece that, that works for you for today. Now below that you have the rate watch commentary playlist and we have our, our two experts, Doug and Dan, uh, they, they give us their different commentary each day. Again, this is a playlist. So if you wanted to get a specific one, you could tap on it and it'll start playing uh, that, that person's uh, video. Now below that you have our mortgage coach calendar. 
and let me pause that real quick. Uh, you have our Mortgage Coach calendar, and uh, this will just basically give you an idea of what events are up and coming for Mortgage Coach, and you can actually click on them to register uh, if you need to. Now, finally, and probably one of my favorite parts of this is, you may have noticed this, there's some buttons up at the top here to record video and preview and highlight. Now, it used to be that you had to go to the end of the presentation screen, hit preview, hit generate link, then hit add audio video to get to the video component. You don't have to do that anymore. You can be on the very first screen of your, of your presentation here, hit record video, choose the type of report, and then it's immediately going to trigger the video record preview. So even if you don't have the report filled out yet, you haven't finished all the details, you can still pop a video on it. Now this leads to a couple of really cool ideas that, that some of our power users are already doing. Um, but for instance, you get on the line with the borrower, you've got their first name, you know, you've got their phone number. Really that's all you need to put in to the TCA, then go and generate the link and send it to them. And while you're on the phone with the borrower, you can be filling out this presentation. Matter of fact, you could preemptively put a video on the presentation even when it's blank, just welcoming them to, to your services. And then as you continue going through the engine to fill out the details, that presentation that they're watching in real time is updating right in front of them. So really cool effect that you can have with people to give them a, a live presentation where you build their options in front of them. And I'd be interested actually to hear some feedback from some of the users who are doing that. I know of a couple of you, thank you so much for providing that feedback, but I'd love to hear from other people that are, that are using this functionality to deliver an empty uh, view and then start filling it out while you're on the line with the customer. So, so Jacob, if you go back to the screen, you know, I want to speak directly to anyone that is either a branch manager or you have a team. We, we have worked really hard to make this your advice platform. So whether that's training someone, you know, we've, we've now, while we st still recommend watching a video a week on our YouTube channel, we have put some of the most valuable content, the rate watch commentary, the interviews and the calendars in there. So for all you managers, as you're um, you know, onboarding new loan officers, great resource for you to help them um, learn as they grow. And then remember, I said we wanted to make it faster to create a TCA and faster to engage with our product. So uh, my two favorite features personally are the strategy templates and the fact that you can either go into live or you could add a video on every screen. So as you're going through and building it out anywhere and everywhere, you can put a video on it or you can go into live highlight. Uh, if you do have questions, let us know. I, for all of you, I've seen a lot of you asking questions and Jacob's just kind of answering them as we go. Um, if I don't get all the questions answered, uh, let me know before we wrap this up. But keep it coming, Jacob, but I do have a few more questions once you have finished. Like, let's, let's do this in two parts, Jacob, where you do the advice engine overview, and then we'll build out strategies, and I'll get all the questions answered before we go to that second section. Okay, sounds good. So there's really only one more thing I want to show you here, um, and this is something that people were asking for for quite some time. Kind of a hidden Easter egg in here, but uh, when you look at any loan product as you're filling out these products, you'll notice that there is a graphic on the right, and there's a table on the right. Now check out what we've got in the table now. This didn't used to be there. You can now see the cash to close for each loan product inside the editor. You don't have to generate a preview to see your cash to close. You can also see what your total amount financed is. So if you're rolling in fees and you're trying to figure out what your total is, again, you don't even need to go to preview to figure it out. Uh, your points and prepaid interest are shown right here. So if I, had, uh, if I put in points, you'll see this will update on the fly for me. And uh, there we go, so there's my one point and there's my 2905 in points. So we're, we're doing constant calculations in here uh, to make sure that this, this all flies right for you and you can see things like LTV at a glance and of course cash to close. This one's one of the most important ones that people have really been asking about for a long time and we're really glad we were able to, to get it into this version for you. Now, as far as the other features, we really modeled this on the same functionality you're already used to. So you don't need to watch a whole bunch of training videos to understand how to use this platform. The, the root usage is exactly the same as before. You know, you're gonna put in some basic client information. You're gonna answer some assumptions, questions. You're gonna create your loan products. 
and you're going to generate your presentation. Now you have a lot of bells and whistles that you can do in between there, but I don't want you to be intimidated by it. It really is the same process as you're used to. There's just new things you can do with it and new views you, you can get in here. Now, one other thing I want to point out to you real quick is that there's some, you know, while we talked about the tool tips, there's tool tips for almost every field in here. Uh, there's also these little eye bubbles. Um, so what these do is these actually give you a pop out and there we go. And this, this will give you a brief explanation of what this is. So these are kind of our understanding cues, right? So we'll give you some bullets on, on what this is talking about. There's a video and this is actually our, our knowledge base article. So if you click on this, it would take you over to our help center to, to check the knowledge base article. And then there's a brief video specific to this process. We're going to be continuing to add more of these uh, as we go forward. So look out for them. Um, but each one of these is going to have this, this bulleted format. It's going to have a link to a help section if we've got one. And it's going to have a link to a video if there's one specific to that task. So for those of you who have struggled with, you know, what is my, my short term analysis and how do I explain that? This is going to give you a quick hit to the video that's going to help you understand the numbers that are generated right here. So, so branch managers, another gift for you so that every one of your mortgage professionals can become a mortgage advisor. And not only are we the platform that helps them deliver that to the client, we're the platform that teaches them how to be a mortgage advisor. You know, we've had a lot of this content and it's either been buried in our YouTube channel or, you know, it's buried in our support center. Now you have a loan officer that you're trying to take to the next level the number one most valuable thing you could do as a branch manager is get them the advice engine, get them access to this. They will have the content, the training, and then within the presentation engine that they're giving to the, to the family, we'll teach them how to have these more strategic conversations, you know, helping loan officers going from playing checkers where they're quoting rates, fees, closing costs, monthly payments to their delivery advice. And they understand how to deliver advice. So this product is much more than just a total cost analysis creator. It really becomes this educational platform to elevate a loan officer from loan officer to advisor. Um, I have put two posts in our Facebook group. I would love anybody that's on it to answer both of them. So one of them is what strategy templates are you creating today? I think it's, we want to learn what strategy templates are most valuable to you. So if you are creating any strategy templates today, tomorrow, please comment on that post in our Facebook group. We want to learn what the community is doing most. And then we want to play that forward. Within a week or two, we'll have some best practices. Like, hey, these are the strategy templates that you should have. And we'll bring some leadership back to you. So please answer that question. Also, we want to know what you like best about this. You know, we've already uncovered about five brand new features to the mortgage coach platform what, what's your number one favorite feature we really do want to know jacob keep it rocking and i i do have some questions from the community let me know when you're ready for them all right great so actually i wanted to address one of the questions i saw in there from kevin newton uh, hey kevin thanks for joining the call uh yes you can absolutely still do the live highlighting so um you can actually do it two different ways this preview and highlight button is just like hitting the old edge live button so this will open up a version of the presentation that allows you to highlight and pop out things. And this would happen on your borrower's end as well. Um, so yes, functionality is definitely still there. Like I said, you can do it from the preview, but you can actually also do it from the record video screen. So if you open this guy up and then let's say you record your video or you don't and uh, you close this out, you notice that I can still highlight on this screen same functionality as the other live screen had. So if I'm highlighting and popping out more infos, that's gonna happen on my borrower screen too. So, so answer to your question, absolutely you can do it still. You can now do it in more ways. So <laughs> you still have the, the functionality there. All right, um, let's see. One other thing I wanted to show you in here. Um, let's see, I was checking out the, the questions real quick just to make sure there was nothing else we wanted to cover. Okay, so one other thing I want to show you here is that uh, you have full control over how this screen looks. Uh, now, when, when, I, when I say that, I'm talking about, you know, some of you may not have a 27-inch monitor like I'm looking at right now, so you're not going to have all this extra spacing on here. Maybe you're working on a 15-inch laptop screen. Now, this will scale with the size of your screen. 
And you notice as you get further and further in, things start disappearing to give you more room to view. So our menu bar toolbox is actually behind right here. And it will disappear on its own if there's not enough room to show it on the screen. The same thing will actually happen to the left-hand menu bar. So if we get too far, it'll collapse the left-hand menu bar. Now, some of you may be looking at this and going, wow, that'll fit on my iPad. Ding, 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 ding. You're absolutely right. You can open this on an iPad. You can open this on a Samsung tablet. And you can actually use the full editor within those, those devices. Um, and then you can break out these extra sections if you want anytime uh, by simply hitting a little folder icon or hitting a little toolbox icon here. So for me, I love this feature because now this crosses multiple devices for me without having to change formats. Uh, so some of you have already toyed around with it on the beta side and noticed it, uh, but I wanted to make sure everybody else out there knew about it too. So Dave, I think that's my, uh, that, that's my overview here. Um, we can certainly uh, field some questions and dive into some strategies. Yeah, well, let's, let's do, I saw some questions around feed templates. Someone was commenting, have we made it easier? I mean, I think the, the concept of a strategy template makes it easier because you could have, you know, program templates, feed templates, and then you could have strategy templates. So it's like one and done. Uh, but someone asked about um, something about contributions aligning with purchase price. And that if you could just show any users on how to create feed templates and anything we've done to make it faster and easier, Jacob. Sure. Well, let's look at the fee templates first. So um, remember I showed you a little bit earlier, the easiest way to create a fee template is to actually just build your line items on a specific loan and then do save as template. But you can still do them in the settings too. So if you were to go into settings, you can go into fee templates and then um, you can actually, you can see I got a bunch in here, but uh, if I want to do a new one, I'm just simply going to hit create a new template. And then I'm going to call this one uh, Tuesday interview. And when you do that, now you've got a new open area here and you can just add a bunch of fees. So I like adding just a bunch of line items here and then just start going down the line. You know, I'm gonna choose my appraisal fee. I'm gonna choose credit. And I'm getting to these a little bit faster by typing the first letter of, uh, of the specific fee. So actually I want credit report. And then maybe I've got things like owner's title and lender's title. I've got a lot of stuff in here. There we go. And I'm going to have things like notary. So you can see I'm just zipping through this by hitting the first letter of the specific fee I'm looking for. You could keep hitting it to, to keep scrolling down the list, but I kind of use a combination of, of keystrokes and mouse on this one. Um, but let's see, uh, let's get a pest inspection. All right. So once you've created your line items, then it's time to determine what should your dollar amounts be. So stuff like appraisal is pretty easy. You're going to have a set amount for those. Uh, so you're going to just enter that. Same thing with credit. And when you get to things like the title insurance, these can be kind of tough because these vary between different properties, different counties. I mean, there's a whole bunch of variables that come into play. I find that, um, if you don't have access to your title company's website to constantly go and grab the specific details, um, you can do like what Josh Metal does where he can go, he goes into Encompass and he just looks at the total uh, title fees there and then he'll put those in as a bulk cost. Um, or you can actually do uh, percentages here. So once you've, once you've determined what your percentages are, uh, oops, let's see, 0 0.04 and then lender's title. You know, you'll, you'll have to determine what your percentages are going to be, but these percentages will calculate against the loan amount. So um, th this will give you a, a, a calculated field once you get to the output. Uh, so we got something like notary and then pest inspection. Now, once I'm, once I'm done entering my data here, it's already saved. So I can actually just click on any other template and uh, that new template should be in my list now. And if we look down here, you can see it's Tuesday interview and there's my fee list. Now, what I would highly recommend is that you package your fee templates into product templates. So you want to think of this kind of like a Russian nesting doll, right? So the bottom level is going to be your fee templates. These are the detailed line items. But then each one of your, each one of your scenarios would have a fee template attached to it. So why not also do a template for the scenario? So a product template gives you the ability to do the entire loan plus the closing costs, plus the monthly costs. So this is really powerful because when you're doing a new loan product in Mortgage Coach, 
you, you can certainly use the, the templates independently, but if you stack them within each other, it means that you only have to select the top level template. And then imagine I've got four different product templates that are stacked into my new strategy template. So I'm going a level even higher. So now I've built the ground level, I built the middle level in terms of the product templates, and then I've got the top level for the strategy templates. And then you can, you can change those at will. So for instance, depending on how you wanna build your, your fee templates, the, the nomenclature, what you decide to call these fee templates is gonna be pretty important. You can see what I'm using here. I've got like conventional 15 fixed, conventional 30 fixed. But I see people doing like, um, they'll, they'll assign specific states for specific requirements. Uh, they might even do one like conventional 15 with uh, uh, XYZ title company. And then they'll have specific title requirements for that company. So it just depends on how detailed you wanna get, but you don't, you don't have to go all the way down the rabbit hole. You can actually keep this pretty top level and then just keep nesting it into the higher levels so that you can just select the top one and everything cascades down. So, so guys, we have made it easier and faster to quote rates, period. You know, whether you're giving one option to a family, two options to a family, three options to a family, four options, we've made it faster and easier for you to do it. And, and, and you could just, while you're creating out a loan, one and done it. Like, hey, you did the Smith family and you do a lot of loans like the Smith family, I'm gonna make that a strategy template now. Uh, or you could go back and find the Smith family and recreate that. So faster and easier. Jacob, let's, let's create a TCA. I know I wanna get a rent versus own analysis done before this is wrapped up. Why don't you do a, a rent versus own analysis real quick for everyone? Okay, there was one more question in the box real quick about lender credits. So there is actually a new field called lender concession. This acts just like the contribution field in that you put in a positive dollar amount here and it'll subtract it from the cash to close. Um, there are a few fields that are a few fees that act like this in our system, contribution, lender concession, sweat equity, a couple of others. But you can tell which ones they are because the drop down will not allow you to select borrower paid. This is telling you it's a contribution from an external source. It also tells you we're gonna knock down the cash to close by whatever amount you put in here. So keep this in mind. Um, this is actually a new fee that we added probably a few months ago uh, that is a contribution style fee that you can use for this. Thanks Juan Carlo, great question. All right, so uh, Dave, let's go through a rent versus own. So I'm not gonna start with a strategy template here. I'll, I'll do it from scratch just so everybody can see how it's done. But you wanna keep in mind, you can save them as strategy templates. And I've, I've got a few of them in here. You can see test for rent versus own, rent versus own sample, different presentations. Uh, but I'm actually gonna start from scratch. So if I want to, I can actually even make this a strategy template to lead with. Uh, for this one, I'm not going to. I'm just gonna kinda keep it top level here. Uh, but we'll name this one after me. Actually, we'll name it as me as a renter. There we go. So as I'm going through collecting information about this, you know, I, I may or may not have a bunch of information about my borrower. And usually at the rent versus own level, I, I kind of don't, right? I, I'm, I'm looking at potentially a new client that's sitting on the fence, not sure if he really wants to buy. I may not have a whole lot of information about this person. I just may know what some of the general maximums are that they're looking to get into and what they're currently paying. So the trigger here is prepare rent versus own. We're gonna choose yes. And then referred by and partner email. These are actually kind of important when you're uh, when you're doing a marketing presentation or when you're when you're working with a partner uh, on a specific borrower. Obviously, you want to capture the referral source. That's important because you can sort your list by the referral source. But partner email is actually really important too. So. I'll show you what this does when we get to the end, but just like in the legacy, if you enter your partner email here, when you get to the very end of the presentation, you have the ability to check a box to notify your partner when this presentation gets viewed. So now you don't have to constantly keep circling back with your realtor partner who you're working with on this, uh, on this renter that's trying to buy a home. They're automatically gonna get those notifications and they'll see the progress that you're making. Now, as we continue forward, like I said, maybe I don't have a whole lot of information about this borrower yet, but I know the goals. I know that they're trying to get their first home. And as I continue through, I know they're paying $2,000 a month for rent right now. And a traditional rent increase right now is three to 4%. So I'm gonna use 3% 3, 3 here to kind of keep it conservative. Now, if I wanna do a deep dive on what the tax implications are between renting and owning, I can, I can certainly do that. I can put in the standard deduction, in this case, $12,000. 
You can see it's located over here on the right. This is a single person. And uh, as I continue going forward, I'm gonna be asked some more detailed questions. Now, again, if I don't have all this information about the borrower, that's fine. If I am gonna show the, the tax benefit analysis, I do have to at least put a tax bracket in here. So I'm gonna put that in and then continue forward. Now it's time to actually build some loan products. So right now I've input their rent. And for this one, I'm gonna call this one 30 year fixed. And then I'm gonna add a product from my template list. So uh, let's make it an FHA actually. Hey, Jacob, real quick. I want to say two things. Uh, Jacob, I'm going to let you close out the call and answer any questions. I've got a, I'm, I'm traveling everybody working out of a WeWork in Detroit and I've got to jump someplace else, but uh, keep the questions asking. You're killing it. Jacob's going to finish this rent versus own. I want to make sure everybody watching today's interview checks out the, it's, it's in announcements. Denise Donahue, one of our, you know, amazing mortgage coaches and I'll, she did a really cool video where she's taking rent versus own. She's promoting it on Facebook and then she's helping get more first time home buyers for her realtors. So I want to make sure you guys check out the combination of how it's being marketed. Obviously Jacob's showing you how to create it. And Jacob, if you could in the last you know, few minutes, remind everybody about the daily training that we have and how to access that again through the advice engine. But, Hope you love this. I'm looking forward to hearing what your favorite features are. Looking forward to um, hearing what strategy templates you created. What's up, Edwin? Uh, thank you for always being active in the community. Philip Meyer just joined. What's up, Philip Meyer? Hey, uh, Philip. Yeah, it looks like Troy. Man, we got, you know, we got a really good showing. Um, thanks for all the questions. Hey, Chesky, that was a great question. And we'll make sure we get it answered. Um, so, Jacob, if you go ahead and wrap it up, I'll try to stay on this, but I uh, wanted to share my closing thoughts. And my last thought is just a reminder to every manager watching this, get your team on the advice engine. It's never been easier for them to learn. It's never been faster to create these. And, and not only are we helping them learn how to create a TCA, we're teaching them how to be an advisor. So if you align with this principle that advice is the best sales strategy well then the advice engine is the most important resource that you can give to your loan officers for all you branch managers out there back to you jacob all right thanks dave so i've already collected some basic rent information some basics about my client here and i'm starting to build my first loan product now this is a renter so i'm going to show them some low down payment options um, so in this case, I'm going to start off with my 30 year fixed FHA. I brought in a template, so it automatically applied my upfront premium type. Um, and let's say this is 350. And my template already have my down payment in there. So we're good there. Um, let's get that back up to three and a half. There we go. And then I just need to put in a rate here. Uh, for those of you who are actually on an enterprise license right now using Optimal Blue, you'll notice that you have a button much like I do to get pricing. So that'll speed things up for you a little bit too. Uh, alternatively, you could certainly just enter a rate here. So let's say I can get a 4.75. And then as I continue forward, I, I actually packaged my closing cost into my product template. This was that example of nesting I was talking about. Um, so when I applied my product template, it automatically applied my closing cost for me. So I don't have to do anything with that. I could go into this and make detailed adjustments if I want to. Uh, for instance, um, I'm probably not going to need my MI reserves on an FHA, so I'll yank that out. Uh, but you can certainly feel free to, to edit anything that's in here. Once I'm done, hit apply to loan. And then my next... And one other thing I want to show you real quick is you notice I've been scrolling down here and then hitting next. You can also use these, these operators up at the top. So if you don't, if you don't want to scroll down to the bottom, you can just zip through it using the ones up here. Now my product template already had uh, my monthly costs in there. So those came in. Uh, you can see that uh, everything down to my reserves is all there. So we're good to go. I've got one full product. Now I'm going to add one more. So in this case, this is going to be the, the Fannie Mae 3% because that's usually a good comparative model for the FHA 3.5. And, um, and let's see if I've got a, eh, let's, let's add it from a template. So there's my Fannie Mae Home Ready. Again, just a simple template that I saved that has no purchase price, no interest rate. So I'm going to fill those in on a case-by-case -case basis. 
but my down payment is there and let's put my rate in. Maybe I can get it, uh, let's see, four. Uh, yeah, let's do 4.875. Um, and then as I continue going through here, my template took care of my costs. No, so no, I probably wanted to go in and make sure there's no mortgage insurance reserves on that one too. And then my, uh, my monthly costs are all there. And you notice the different mortgage insurance percentage. And that's because that's what I saved to the template for my Fannie Mae 3% here. And this is actually done. So if I go to my analysis screen now, I can see the different options against each other. There's my rent, there's my FHA, there's my, my Fannie Mae 3. And uh, when we look at this, we can do things like adjust the property appreciation rate if we want to. We've got it set to four here. We can adjust the uh, the goals and horizons. So, for instance, if my renter uh, is is you know has told me some of their goals, you know they got a kid going to college in five years, and maybe five years is a good point for me. Um, maybe they're looking at retirement in in eight or nine years. Maybe that's what I want to use for my long term, just so they can see where they're at. But then I also have the ability to change the the chart types. So by default, it's going to show rent versus principal paid. It's a powerful metric. But because I'm actually showing the tax benefit too, I can show rent versus tax benefit, or I can show just a full tax benefit analysis, which is gonna show me as a renter, I take the standard deduction and I can get a $15,000 benefit over the five year period. As a homeowner, however, I'm getting a substantially higher benefit because I'm getting my interest on the, uh, on the different mortgages here. Now we've got all the tax laws already built in here. So we're doing the full calculations to make sure we're getting you the right tax benefit here uh, based on the brackets you enter. Now, finally, it's time to put a video on this and send it out. So uh, again, just go to the very end of this. Uh, you can modify your payment notes. I always like to leave mine so I have to modify them. Um, so in this case, I actually did include taxes and insurance. So I'm gonna modify those payment notes and then uh, I'm gonna choose my rent versus own actually. And let's, yeah, we'll use those, that's fine. And as I continue forward, I have the opportunity to, to modify more of the language that's used behind the graphics. And finally, at the very end, and again, you don't have to go through all these screens like I just did. You can actually just jump, here's one screen, go to the last screen. You don't have to go through each one. Uh, but pretty important, anytime you're quoting a rate, make sure and put a quote date on it. And then from that point, hit generate link. This is the link that you're gonna share with your borrower. So obviously you wanna add a video to this. Um, I'm not gonna add a video for today, but you've seen how to do that. Just hit add audio video and it triggers the video version. But this is what the output looks like of that rent versus own presentation. So when a borrower gets it, they're gonna see your disclosures and they're gonna to have to click to accept and then immediately start playing your video if you attached one. Uh, otherwise, you're seeing a comparison between renting and a couple of home ownership options. Now, very important for rent versus own is that you understand what we're actually showing here. We do show the total payments for each option. So $2,000 in rent, $2,500 for the FHA, $2,600 for the Fannie Mae. But take a look at what else we're doing here. We're also incorporating things like the tax benefit and the principal paid. So on the rent side, they're paying $2,000 a month, but they're getting a tax benefit at the end of the year of their standard deduction. So the 250 there is just their standard deduction divided by 12. That means their net monthly payment, when you consider what they're getting back on the standard deduction, is $1,750 a month. Conversely, when you get to the home ownership side, you have the total principal interest taxes and insurance payment. We subtract out the tax benefit, just like we did on the rent side. And then we subtract out the principal paid. They're retaining that in the form of equity. So this is not being viewed as a cost. So really the net cost between these options are roughly the same. There's really not much difference for this person renting and owning. There's a little bit of a difference in cash flow, but the ultimate cost here is about the same. Now naturally, it's pretty staggering what happens with net worth over time uh, when you're a renter. So uh, let's go and check it out and see what that looks like. We get back to our analysis screen. Instead of long-term principal paid, I'm gonna show long-term net worth. And this tells a big story. Um, <laughs> you'll see here, net worth in nine years as a renter, zilch, you're not doing anything with your money. It's, uh, it's you're just putting it into your landlord's pocket. Nine years, $212,000 in equity. 
So this is this is pretty staggering. I mean, we're we're doing all right here. Um, now, beyond that, uh, I think that's pretty much the end of the rent versus own proposal. So let me see if there's any questions here that I can get to real quick. Um, so question from somebody identified as Galaxy J3. Not sure who you are, but great question. Can you save your notes in each template if you want to keep it standard? Uh, so you can save them in the strategy templates. So if you uh, say, for instance, you can see, let's put some uh, notes saved here. And then I'm going to turn this into a strategy template. That means that if I go and look up this strategy template, and that's Jacob Renter, and I copy to a new client, oh, actually the rent would have carried it across. Oh, let's go back into the strategy template. And I edit that template. It looks like my notes aren't getting saved to this because it's trying to trigger a TCA instead of a rent versus own. So, uh, on a TCA, if I was just doing general TCA and not rent versus own, these will carry through, but it looks like we have a little bit of bug on the rent versus own. So I'll get that addressed, but absolutely the answer is if you store these notes to your strategy template, they will spawn with the new copy when you copy it out to a new client. So uh, definitely you can do that. Uh, looks like Kathleen, Kathleen's got a question. Um, Anyone know what software allows me to direct potential buyers to my mortgage coach link and my mortgage coach program to capture the lead? So that's a great question, Kathleen. That's one that you should post on the Facebook page. Let's see if we can get some interaction from other people. I wouldn't be the best person to answer that question. Uh, Jim Sanger, um, curious about the open, open house templates as well. So absolutely. And we didn't cover anything on the partner side today. We were just looking at the client side here. Uh, but when you click on partner, this will show you your partner reports. So much like the borrower side, you still have the ability to set strategy templates. So if you want to set a seller buy down strategy template, you can do that. Um, when you start a new partner, uh, it's just like the data entry was previously. And then when you get to the presentation screen here, you're gonna be given the option, let me give it a name real quick. You're gonna be given the option to choose seller buy down or open house flyer. If you choose seller buy down, you're gonna get walked through those additional questions like how much is the price credit? How much is it gonna cost the seller? income to qualify. It gives you the option to rename all the columns, um, which this is a fairly new thing that's been in the advice engine. So if you, uh, we also have it in the old legacy version and we've had it for a couple of months now in, in legacy, but uh, uh, this has been in the advice engine for quite some time. And then uh, you're going to continue forward, select your property images, and then generate your link. Now, if you then want to do an open house presentation on this same record, you can absolutely do that. Simply change over to open house, hit next here. Now you've got a presentation title for your open house flyer. You've got your pricing label. So specific questions to the open house instead of the seller buy down. And then when you generate this link, you, that link will point to an open house flyer. This will be separate from the seller buy down link that I would have generated just a moment ago when I chose a different presentation type. Uh, John's question, will our old TCAs carry over into the new advice engine? Absolutely, John. So these are both pointing at the same database. So uh, when you, when you, uh, if you were to start off in the legacy, actually, there was a link at the bottom that said, try our new advice engine. And that basically gave you this view, but all your contacts are the same. They're both pointing at the same database. So technically you can work out of either one. It will affect your database in the exact same fashion. Um, oh, Juan Carlos, another question. If we notice a bug in the new system, who should we notify? I understand this is new and there may be some items that need adjustment. Absolutely, and we're, we're happy to get it. So um, if you're finding bugs in the system, you can actually use this link at the bottom here. Uh, it says have feedback, let us know. Email beta at mortgagecoach.com. That's where you want to report your bugs. If you're, if you're just running into a support issue where you're not sure like how numbers are getting calculated or you need to find help assets and so forth, make sure to email our support team. They'll be a little bit faster in responding to you, whereas our beta team is all developers. So uh, we're going to be uh, a, probably a little slower to respond, but that's where we're going to be able to work out any potential bugs that you can find um, and help you find a solution there. Great question though, thank you, Juan. Uh, let's see if there's any more. Uh, 
Uh, I think that's all the questions I see in Zoom right now. Um, Marcy, are there uh, are there any questions that uh, are coming up in Facebook right now that uh, you think would be applicable for today's call? Of course, Juan just asked me how many games Denver will win this season. Uh, unfortunately, the, the prognosis is really dry from the betting pools right now. Everybody's saying 5-11, and 11, which is awful. I think it's the other way around. I think we're going 11-5. and five. Uh, Kathleen's question. I missed the first half. When will this video be posted? Uh, so Kathleen, this will be posted. It's actually already in Facebook on our, on our Productivity Mastermind feed. Uh, you can actually click on it at any time to review the video or we also post it to our YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen our YouTube channel yet, um, and a matter of fact, if you're in the advice engine, this particular interview is going to be right here in this Tuesday interviews playlist. So uh, we'll, probably a couple hours after we're done here, you'll see this will actually be the primary video in our Tuesday interview playlist. So you can rewatch this at any time. Uh, Ryan's question, will our templates carry over to the advice engine? Great question. Absolutely. When you go into your settings area and you look at product templates, we're pulling these from the exact same database as the legacy was. So your product and fee templates will definitely come over for you. Uh, okay, thanks, Marcy. Um, can you create a real estate office template so that you don't have to start from scratch if you're creating a flyer for another agent in the same office or a current realtor? So yeah, absolutely. So what I would do there is, uh, let's go back to partner. Let's say uh, Barry Grant, you know, I've got his information on this one. I've got uh, his, his images and so forth. But if I want to create another one based on this same template, I could turn this into a strategy template and instead of calling it Barry Grant, maybe I would actually just call this one whatever the name of his real estate office is. So uh, Barry's real estate and then remove the last name. So now I've got a baseline strategy template here. So when I go back into my partner list and look under strategy templates, I've got Barry's real estate here. Now I can left click on that. I can actually copy it to a new partner and this will basically allow me to fill out just some of the basics here. And uh, as I go through it, oh, I gotta put a first name in here. So this is a new guy. As I go through it, I have the ability to put new contact information, new images and so forth. Uh, but if I was to preview this right now, and let's just take a look at, uh, well, actually let's get to an open house. The uh, property images came over. Obviously, I'd have to replace those on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, but I could preview this and uh, we can actually see that I've got just some my branding here on the left, but I haven't put any branding in on the right. Now, if I want to retain the partner images, uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. I probably wouldn't want to make this a strategy template if that's the case. So let's go back to partner and we'll open up Bayer's real estate, edit the template. And I'm going to say, no, this is not a strategy template anymore. And the reason for it is when I go to the analysis screen, I'm going to do copy analysis. You can do it under the current partner if you want. Um, that will have Barry's name on it. So I would copy this to be a new partner and just put in the new partner's uh, detailed information. So hopefully that helps there. Uh, but absolutely, you can save it as a strategy template. For the most part, it's kind of the same process as just copying an existing one or adding an analysis to an existing one. So uh, some functionality there. But if you see uh, if you see anything you'd like to, to have added to that functionality to make it a little bit easier, I know we've talked about that a little bit. Um, you know, there's there's obviously some some future casting for connecting more pieces of data within uh, the mortgage coach environment. Uh, but if there's things that you can see that would make templates more usable for you, please let us know. Uh, beta at mortgagecoach.com or contact our support team, you know, and they can relay the message. But we, we definitely are interested in hearing your feedback on that. Uh, question from John. I'm trying to find the seller buy down. Where do I go to do that? And, and how do I get out of the legacy version? All right, John. So if you're in the legacy version, actually, all you have to do is close out your browser completely and then type in edge.mortgagecoach.com. Oops, there we go. And if your browser can support it, this will redirect you to the new advice engine editor where you can store your password. Now, if you're doing that, John, and you're not getting to the advice engine, meaning it's still going to the legacy version, you may be in a browser that doesn't support it. 
things like Internet Explorer 10 will not support this because uh, Internet Explorer doesn't support any of the new uh, types of functionality that we have in here. If that's the case, open a Chrome browser. Uh, even Firefox will support this. Safari will support this. Internet Explorer will support it to some degree, but there's going to be some, some elements in there that just don't look great because, quite frankly, Microsoft hasn't updated Internet Explorer in two years. So keep that in mind. Our recommended browser is definitely going to be Chrome. Um, and John, if, you, if you're still having trouble getting into it, you can actually, I've, I've created a redirect link uh, that's just mortgagecoach.com forward slash advice engine. And this will actually redirect you directly to the page. So if you want to type that in on your browser, this will take you to the MC editor and uh, allow you to save your login so you can have what I just got right there, which was an immediate login. Uh, SBD real quick from John. Um, all right, so let's, uh, you can actually do a seller buy down on a partner or a client. And the way to do it is just simply selecting what you do at the very end of the presentation. So let's say this, uh, this Barry client here, I've, you know, I input one loan product here. It doesn't even matter if you have four, you really only need one to do a seller buy down. When you get to the presentation screen, you're going to select seller buy down instead of open house. And then as you proceed forward, this is going to give you the options to add all the details about the seller buy down strategy so that when you get to the very end and preview it. Now we've got our custom built seller buy down that shows traditional financing, a potential price reduction, a rate reduction, and then price versus rate. How much would you need to drop this price in order to get the same savings as the rate reduction field? Uh, it's also on the borrower side, uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be for a partner record. So if you go into any borrower uh, outside of maybe a renter, I'll do Dave Savage's report here. If I go to the presentation screen on this one, I can select seller buy down here too. Then I just need to select which one I want to base this buy down on and then continue forward and I get the same screens there. And then if you keep going forward in the wizard here, you'll eventually get to the part where you generate the link and that will be specific to the seller buy down. Uh, and thanks, John, for confirming. Gotcha. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for today. So I think I'm going to go ahead and close out the call. Thank you very much for all your time today. I hope you're as excited about this new uh, platform as I am. Um, and please do. We'd, we'd love to hear feedback from you. Uh, we've actually got some great new things that are planned uh, for the near future uh, that we're going to be adding in. Uh, this push for Advice Engine was to try and give you roughly the same functionality and just ease you into it so you don't have to learn a whole, not, a whole lot of new stuff. But we still packaged in a lot of good stuff here that uh, just never was available before, and uh, it's easier than ever now. So uh, take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Uh, contact our support team at support at mortgagecoach.com. Or if you find a bug in our new platform, send to beta at mortgagecoach.com and we'd be happy to help. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.